Hello and welcome back to this second video in my Solidity series. In today's video, we're going to go through how you can send and receive uh, cryptocurrency to your smart contract, as well as looking at permissions, meaning that we're going to figure out who can access certain functions in the smart contract. To demonstrate this, I thought we would build a simple banking contract where we'll be able to store a balance. We'll be able to withdraw and deposit money. And just like last time, we're going to do this in the uh, online editor uh, called Remix. And once you get here, we're going to start off just like last time by writing Pragma Solidity and define which version of the compiler we're going to use. And then we're going to define the contract which we'll call bank contract. So what do we need in terms of variables? We need a balance, right? We need a balance, which is going to be private, meaning that only the contract is going to be able to access it. We're also going to need a function to deposit money. So we function deposit. And this needs to be public so that anyone can access this function. And it's also going to be payable, meaning that when we execute this function, we can also send it some ether, some cryptocurrency. And this function, well, we don't need it to return anything. Just do it like this. What we're going to do is we're going to write balance. So we want to increase the balance. So we're going to add message dot value and message is a structure that contains information about the actual calling of the function and the value is of course how much value in terms of ether that we sent when we executed the function so we're going to add that value to balance and that's it and then we also need a function to withdraw money, right? So we're going to create another function called withdraw. And we're going to need to take a parameter here with the amount that we want to withdraw. And that's an unsigned integer. And this is also going to be public. And in here, we want to subtract the amount from the balance and then also send that amount to the address, to the actual user. And to do that, we first should check so there actually is enough balance in the bank to do this. So we need to check that balance is greater or equal to the amount that we requested to withdraw. And if that's true, we're going to decrease balance by the amount. And we're also going to use uh, a function called message.sender.send, which is a function to send ether to an address. And we want to send it here to the address that actually called the function, which is in message.sender. Before we're done with the withdraw function, we actually need to add a checkpoint to see if the send function was actually able to execute without error. If some error were to happen in the send function, we had already changed the balance, right? So we need to check if there was an error in this execution of the function. And we can do that by putting it inside an if statement. And then, of course, putting an exclamation mark at the beginning. So that would mean that if this returns false, which it does if there was some error, then we would have to actually adjust the balance once again. And then we want to add a function to get the balance, which we'll write like this, get balance, which is a getter. So we're going to write public constant. And it kind of, it, it returns an unsigned integer. 
And all this does is, is of course to return our balance variable. All right, so now I actually want to run this. We'll go over to run and make sure that you've selected the JavaScript VM once again. And then we create the contract. And we can check get balance right away. That it's zero because we haven't deposited any funds yet. And then we can choose one of our accounts up here, which are just test accounts. And then fill in here how much we want to deposit. Let's say a thousand ways. And then click deposit. This should now have updated our balance variable. And we can check that by hitting get balance again. And now we'll see that it's a thousand. And if we want to withdraw this, we can withdraw, let's say 500, and hit withdraw. And then check our get balance again. And now it's 500. So we've withdrawn 500 to the original account that we created and deposited the money with. But we have an issue here, right? Because if I choose one of the other accounts, so now I'm acting as a completely different person here, and I go to this contract and I try to withdraw the remaining 500, and we'll check it balance again, and that actually works. And that's not a really good banking contract. We want to limit this contract so only the actual creator, the owner of this bank account, can withdraw money. Because otherwise, you could steal people's money, and that's not a good thing. To do this, we need to understand permissions. And how this is done is that we create a variable where we save the address. And address is a special type here in Solidity. So we're going to create a variable that's of the type address and is public and is called owner. So we want to set the owner variable to the address that created the contract. So we need to create a constructor, meaning a function that is executed only when the contract is created. And that's a function that always has the same name as the contract itself. So let's define that function bank contract. And it needs to be public. And in here, all we need to do is set the owner to message.sender. And we already know what message is. It contains information about the message that executed the function. And here the sender is the address of the person that executed, created this contract. So now I have created a variable for the owner where we keep track of whose bank account this is. And then we need to change in the withdraw function. We're not going to care about the deposit function today because anyone can deposit money into my bank account. I wouldn't care. So I'm going to let that slide. But we need another checkpoint here. We not only need to check that, the, that we have enough balance, we also want to check so that the person who executed this function, message.sender, is the same as the owner. So the addresses needs to be the same. Then we're going to allow what's in here. We're going to allow the person to withdraw funds if they are the actual owner and the balance is greater than the amount. So let's try this out. We're going to remove this contract and create it again. And now we can check the owner right away. And here's the address of the account that I created the contract with. And you can see that they is the same address up here as down here. And now we can deposit some funds like we did last time. We're going to deposit a thousand ways again from this account that I created the contract with and hit deposit. And then we're going to check the balance and it's a thousand. We're going to try to withdraw 500 ways. I check the balance, it's 500, so I've withdrawn 500 to back to my account. And now let's switch accounts again and see if I can withdraw the 500 that is left. I shouldn't be able to do this since we updated the code. Hit withdraw. 
and the balance is still 500, right? So now we've successfully created a contract where that we can send and withdraw money to, and where we only allow the actual owner to withdraw money. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. In the next video, we'll talk about the different data structures in Solidity and how we can improve this banking contract with events. Stay tuned and I'll see you then.